Welcome back to the Saturday Social, everyone. When the station heads and I were trying to figure out what sort of a show this should be, we had some differing perspectives. They were leaning more towards a traditional talk slash variety show format featuring amusing segments and interviews with interesting people, whereas I wanted it to be more of an American Gladiators meets Supermarket Suite hybrid. In the end, we met in the middle and went with their idea. And I'm actually pretty glad that we did because otherwise, I might not have had the opportunity to catch up with one of everyone's all-time favorite Cleveland Browns, the almost vexingly likable Joe Thomas. Thank you for the time, Mr. Thomas. I know you're not originally from Cleveland, but uh, you are one of us now, whether you like it or not. We've got our Cleveland stank all over you, sir. I'm not sure if I'm important either, but I definitely am stinky, so thank you Good. for that. So the first thing you did when you retired uh, to relax was you uh, lost about 600 pounds and then you got totally jacked, and then you went out and got some more jobs. My biggest fear when I retired from the Browns was, I'm not gonna have a purpose. I'm not gonna have anything to wake up, get me out of bed every day, because that's what I saw from so many of my former teammates. My fear of not finding that purpose and passion led me to finding like six or seven purposes and passions. Okay, rapid fire, get to know you. Uh, what kind of music have you been listening to? I grew up as a child of the 90s, and I loved grunge. During this pandemic, I started listening to a little bit more of that. One of the songs that came on was uh, this morning when I was pumping iron, Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah. Uh, pumped to snuff the rooster. I was like, yes, more bench yep. press. Yes, another yep. set. It was awesome, man. It just gets you fired up. That's a great tip. This is probably my problem. See, I've been working out to Enya. Just crying on the bench. I've gone to some pretty dark places during the pandemic. I, um, actually ate like an old dusty can of sausage gravy recently. Have you prepared anything particularly gross yourself? I'm a hunter fisher, so I've got a freezer full of fish and game and stuff. I get to the bottom of the freezer and I pull out like the turkey leg that's been frozen for like three years. And I was like, you know what? This is a challenge. Uh -huh. I can make this edible and I don't die. I am the world's greatest chef. Move over Michael Simon, move over Rocco Whalen, but it tasted like I was licking the the top of my grandma's dresser. Like it was yeah. pure dust and old and disgusting. Mm -hmm. Gotta at least touch on Browns. Um, obviously, great year last year, especially by the offensive line, um, particularly rookie Jedrick Wills, who you said was going to be amazing. I thought he was the best prospect that I've seen come out of college for an offensive lineman in several years. For the Browns to be able to match their biggest need with the best player in the draft at that position is not something that always happens in the draft. And some people probably don't know that you helped prep Jedrick Wills in the offseason, in a weird offseason. I hope I gave him some perspective on playing the position. I hope I gave him some technique analysis, and I hope I gave him a jump start. Well, thank you very much, 2023 Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee Joe Thomas for your time. Um, thank you for repping the city so well, and thanks for being one of our favorite Clevelanders. That means so much to me. I am happily a Clevelander. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe Thomas, for the conversation, and more importantly, for being a rare bright spot during all of those dismal seasons before the Browns finally became good in preparation for their 2022 Super Bowl championship.